Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to address a question that I get asked quite frequently on the channel. The frequency of the questions that I get asked that pertain to this have gone up post-election. The question is, I'm in the market now for a new rifle, what should I buy? I always want to tell people, look, I can't really recommend to you what rifle or handgun will work for you. We're all different. We're all wired differently. Everything feels different. What I might like, you may not like. But as a general rule, there are two rifles that are commonly available that I think make great self-defense rifles and, if need be, good shiznit hits the fan rifles. And let me tell you about what those two are. I'm sure you guys have heard of these before and probably already know what I'm going to say. First of all, we have the AK-47. This particular rifle is a Wasser 10. This rifle is still somewhat available out there on the marketplace, although the supplies have dried up again because of all the excitement post-election. This rifle retails for right around 600 bucks now. There was a time these rifles could be had for a little over $300, a little less than 400 bucks. Those days are gone. Now, if you can find them on the market, you're going to pay 600 bucks for them sometimes. If you get lucky, you might find one for 550. However, I'm going to recommend the Wasser 10 because, first of all, it has a lot of the features that you'll want in an AK-47. It has a chrome-lined barrel. I think that's important. The rest of the rifle is pretty much a military spec AK-47, and it is manufactured in Romania and imported by Century Arms International. Now, I know you guys know that I like the 5.45 by 35 or by 39 cartridge, which is this, which is the AK-74. I'm not recommending that right now. Let me tell you guys why. The AK-74 round isn't manufactured domestic, domestically. Now, there are companies like Hornaday that are making special ammunition. They have the VMAX load, for example, that they're loading into steel cases, but it's not commonly available. It's really, really in short supply, and there's no other major U.S. manufacturer right now of the ammunition. We're relying solely upon imports for that ammo. The cost of that ammo has gone up. When I first got into the AK-74, you could buy a case of ammo of 1,080 rounds for right around 120 bucks. If you can find it now, it's about 160 or 170 bucks for a case. So the price is creeping up. Now, if you're buying this rifle because you're worried about the post-election results and what gun bans may come down the pipe, you're probably going to want to look at the AK-47 because the 7.62 by 39 cartridge is commonly available. It's imported, but it's also manufactured domestically by a number of different ammunition manufacturers. So that's why I'm recommending the AK-47. So let's take a look at the other rifle that's out there. America's favorite and America's sweetheart, the AR-15. This particular rifle is a Colt AR-15. This is a 6920 law enforcement marked rifle. Colt now manufactures this rifle as the M4 or the M4A1. So it's available on the market as either the 6920 or the M4. It's pretty much the same rifle. This is also the same rifle that's used by our U.S. military. That means the magazines are the same. Any of the accessories that you put on the rifle would be the same that are commonly available for U.S. forces that are also widely available in the U.S. marketplace. You'll notice it has a different stock on it. This is not the standard factory stock. I, this one is from um, Mako Group. It has a spare magazine that's held back here. I'll talk more about this in a future video. But that's what's nice about this particular rifle. It's completely modular. There's a lot of accessories out there on the marketplace for it. But that's also true of the AK-47. You'll notice that my Wasser 10 had a folding stock on it. Again, it's a Mako Group stock. It had different uh, fore-end grips on it. It had a polymer fore-end grip. They come with wooden stocks. So both of these rifles are fairly modular. You can put a whole bunch of different accessories on them. This rifle retails for just a little over a thousand bucks and it's available at Walmart. My local Walmart has these on the rack along with other different types of black rifles. I also see Wyndham Weaponry having their rifles on the same rack. And so for around a thousand bucks you can get a good AR-15 like this one. Now if you're not wanting to spend a thousand dollars there are alternatives on the market that I think are good choices. The Wyndham Weaponry rifles is an example or Stag or Rock River. They all make or even PSA. They all make very good rifles for the money. You don't need to invest a thousand dollars or more to have a good reliable rifle that will work well for you both for self-defense or for range use. Now when I say that these rifles are modular let's take the AK-47 as an example. The AK-47, if you want to put a red dot sight on it, they have accessory rails here on the, on the right-hand side, I'm sorry, the left-hand side of the rifle. I can put a 4x magnified optic on this particular rifle really easily. This is a Midwest Industries mount and a Hilux CMR uh, scope. It's a 4 power, 1 to 4 power scope that fits nicely on the rifle. I have this Mako stock on here because it gives me about an inch extra length, which is required for the proper eye relief on this particular scope but I can put the exact same scope on the AR-15. The M4 has a removable carrying handle. Just pop the carrying handle off the rifle. And here's my CMR with my LaRue mount. I stick it on the rifle, flip the locking levers, 
and I can put a four power, one to four power scope on this rifle as well. Again, both rifles are modular. Both rifles will give you fairly decent accuracy. The AR-15 is going to give you more accuracy than the AK-47 will, but the AK-47 has relatively cheap ammunition that's commonly available. Wolf, Tula, all that type, all those different brands of ammunition are, are easily available in most gun shops around the country. And for short to medium range, this rifle packs quite a bit more punch than the 5.56 cal the chambering of the AR-15. The AR-15 is going to offer you a little bit less recoil. And it's also going to have better ergonomics for most Western shooters. The stocks are going to be a little bit longer. The pistol grip I find to be a little bit more ergonomic. And accessories abound for this rifle. But again, the same is true for the AR, I'm sorry, for the AK-47. Let's do a little bit of shooting with both these rifles so I can show you the differences in recoil and handling characteristics of the rifles. And then we'll just kind of close with some closing thoughts. So first up, let's talk about the AR-15. The AR-15 is chambered in 223 or 556, which is a commonly available round again. This is Wolf ammunition I'm firing out of the rifle. The AR-15 is America's sweetheart, as I mentioned. This rifle is used by U.S. Armed Forces. Just about every gun shop in America is going to have an AR-15, but not all AR-15s are created equal. Some will run the Wolf ammunition, some won't. And by Wolf, I mean steel case. That includes Tula, Brown, Bear, brands like that. So when you're buying an AR-15, if you plan to stockpile ammunition, you know, ammo prices have gone absolutely ridiculous these past few years. And so I shoot a lot of steel-cased ammo, and I stockpile a lot of steel-cased ammo. And so my rifles, I demand, are able to shoot steel-cased ammo. I stockpile it. I keep it on hand. I practice with it. It's good ammo to have around because it's usually about, you know, half the price of brass cased ammo comparatively. So if you're cautious, if you're thinking about that type of stuff, if you're thinking about how much money can I put into ammunition and my gun and things like that, you're probably going to want to consider whether or not the rifle will shoot steel. Anyway, let's do a little bit of shooting with the AR-15. I'll show you what the recoil looks like in the basic manual of arms. To load the rifle, you put the magazine in the magazine well, charging handles back here, you charge the weapon, the safety lever is right there, you can flip it to fire. So it's very ergonomic, it shoulders very nicely, and I'll show you just how light this recoil is. The rifle really has no recoil, and that's just with a standard bird cage flash hider on it that comes with the rifle. The handguards are double heat shielded because they're M4 style, but depending on the rifle that you buy, a PSA, a, a, a Wyndham weaponry or whatever, may or may not have the double heat shielding. But again, it's modular. You can just pop these handguards off. You can put a forward rail on it. Midwest Industries, Knights Armament, a whole bunch of companies make rails for these rifles. So again, it's very easy to shoot, very ergonomic, and all the accessories abound, and they're usually pretty affordable. You can buy high-end accessories, you can buy low-end accessories. This makes a very good choice. Next up is the AK-47 or the Wasser 10. The Wasser 10, when you buy one, you're going to want to inspect the rifle that you buy. Unfortunately, you can get a good one or you can get a bad one. The front sights can be canted, the gas block back, or back here can be canted. You have to look down the, the rifle and make sure everything lines up. Make sure that the receiver is true. Pull the bolt to the rear and see if it easily rides forward. If the bolt sticks back here, the receiver is not properly made. It's not true. The bolt should not lock open. It should move smoothly in the receiver. If you pick one of these up on the rack, the sights are true. The bolt moves freely. Everything looks good. The rivets look good. The basic finish looks good. Chances are the rifle is going to shoot and behave just fine. If it has canted sights, it's not worth the hassle. Put it down and pick up another one and see if it has properly aligned sights. For the money, they're hard to beat, and again, it is a military-grade AK. Now, you'll notice with this AK, I have some different accessories on it. I have a U.S. Palm pistol grip, again, the Mako side-folding stock. The stock just folds to the side like that, making the overall length of the rifle very short. Just like the AR-15, there's a ton of accessories available for this particular rifle. I do have the Hilux scope on it, mounted via Midwest Industries mount. This mounts that scope really low to the receiver. You'll notice that it sets so low that I don't even need to use the cheek riser that's available on this stock. I can get a proper cheek weld with this rifle without it. It's a really cool new mount. It really only works with the CMR. Shooting this rifle is just a little bit different. This is a 7.62 by 39. It's a 30 caliber round. Magazine rocks into place. Magazines are dirt cheap and abundant. You can still get European steel magazines for right around 10 or 14 bucks. Used to be able to pick them up for five or six bucks at gun shows. Not the case anymore, but still, they're everywhere and they're still cheap. You can also buy more expensive magazines like the US Palm, which I, I really don't use too much of those. I, I stick with the steel magazines. 
The manual of arms using the rifle is a little bit different than the AR-15. Lock the magazine in, pull the charging handle to the rear, and let it go. This rifle is going to have a little bit more recoil than the AR-15 because it's shooting a heavier load. Let's see how the rifle shoots. As you can see, the recoil is not that bad. You're going to have a little bit more muzzle flash because it doesn't have a muzzle device. On the Wasser 10, the muzzle nut that's on there is welded in place. You'll have to take a Dremel and cut that tack weld off if you want to screw on a different muzzle device. But you can do that fairly easily. The recoil is not bad. The safety right here, easy to manipulate. It's big. The rifle is known for its reliability, and I've had really good luck with my Wassers or my Romanian made AKs. You'll know that I have a Draco SBR and I have a Mini Draco. This is the big brother to those, those two uh, AK pistols. You'll notice that the bolt does not lock open on the last round. Change magazines, pull the magazine out, stick the next magazine in. Very simple. Some people call it caveman simple. It's a great alternative if you're looking for a self-defense rifle, home protection rifle, or a shiznit hits, hits the fan rifle. So these are my two picks when people ask me what rifle should they buy. These aren't the only options on the market. There are other rifles available, rifles that are more expensive. You can buy the ACR, a SCAR, something like that. You can buy a Mini 14. There's a whole bunch of different rifles out there, but as a general rule, these are two top brands, two top types of rifles that are available everywhere, just about every gun shop you go to, and there's a wide variety of prices. With the AK, the Wasser 10, right around 600 bucks. It chambers a cartridge that's commonly available. Now, one of the things that people are worried about is the banning of importation of ammunition. With an executive order, a president can ban the importing of, of ammo. The ATF can ban the imports of various rifles simply by redefining what sporting means. So it doesn't necessarily take an act of Congress to ban ammunition imports or even to change what rifles are importable. However, I don't think everybody should be going out there right now doing these panic buys. There's no reason to believe that we have an assault weapons ban that's going to pass tomorrow. There's time to buy a rifle, so don't take part in the panic buying contributing to driving up the prices artificially. These things should really not cost more than four to six hundred bucks for an AK or a thousand bucks for an AR. So you can wait buy something when the price is right. You don't have to worry about an assault weapons ban tomorrow. But anyway, that's why I say the 7.62 by 39 in the AK. Should some sort of crazy executive order come down, the 545 might go away. The 7.62 by 39 is still available and domestically produced. With the AR-15, it's hard to go wrong. These rifles are everywhere. Everybody likes them. Parts are available everywhere. And you have a wide variety of choices when it comes to buying brands. You can buy a Colt like this, which I think is a very solid rifle at just over a thousand bucks. You can buy those PSAs, Wyndham Weaponries, Rock Rivers for a little bit less or the Stags. Or you can go all the way up and buy, you know, $2,500 LWRCs or MR556A1s from H&K. I don't think you need to spend that kind of money to get a good self-defense rifle. And that's what these two rifles represent. Good rifles for the money. If you guys have any questions about what you've seen here this afternoon, you can always ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash military arms. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for the subs. We'll talk to you guys soon.